We're going to make a simple, adjustable, anti-plastic shaped ring. So get your ring size and you need the inside diameter in millimeters and you need to know the letter size. So use the knife edge part inside measurement. Always make sure you zero your calipers. Wiggle around the bit and don't let it drop down inside this little notch. So keep it out on the knife edge. So mine is 1776. You multiply by pi 3.14 so mine ends up being, so that'll give you the length of the material for your ring. And you need to add another 10 millimeters for overlap. So mine actually is uh, 76 millimeters long total. So we're going to take a 10 millimeter wide strip of metal. We'll cut it 76 millimeters long and then we'll draw our pattern on it. So you can just use the steel rule for this, 76 mil, and you can cut it off with a set of shears. Now what we're going to do is take the same steel rule and we're going to measure across diagonally. And we'll just mark it with a texture. Now, what we want is, we want one side to be slightly rounded and it'll be the opposite side on the other end. And then we want to come back towards the middle and the middle we want to be three or four millimeters wide. Yeah. So what you're going to do at this point is saw this shape out and we'll round this corner a little and we'll round this corner a little. So saw the shape out, file it, uh, the flat edges will be done with a flat uh, number two cut flat hand file and the rounded edges will be done with a uh, ring file also number two cut. And when you get that done, tidy it up with sandpaper so you want to get rid of all your sanding marks and then we'll form it. You can draw this full size on a piece of paper and oftentimes that it would be handy to do that because you can just fold the paper around uh, the ring mandrel at the proper size and have a look at it and see if that's what you want. If it isn't, modify it accordingly. But because I know what I want, um, I'm just drawing it straight on the metal and I'll cut it out. So we want two sides flat where they're going to lay next to each other on the finger. And the other two sides slightly rounded and those are what we're going to form anti-plastic. So cut it out and sand it back. We're using a 3 slash 0 blade for this. So as you're sawing, keep your saw so that it's cutting straight up and down and you just slowly turn the saw or the metal when you get to the end of the cut make sure that the blade goes into the wood not into your finger Always hold the metal tight against your bench pin so that it doesn't jump up and down. If it jumps up and down, it'll just break it. When you're sawing, if the blade gets a little bit sticky, take a piece of beeswax and run it down the blade. So that helps it move freely.
So now you have your rough shape. Flat file for the outside. Brace it against your bench pin. And a ring file for the curve. And if you scrub it sideways as you file, it'll eliminate all those little ripples. So you never want to go just straight across. Scrub it. And when you get all of your saw marks filed off, then sand it. So once we get it formed, we're going to take an anticlastic stake, sinusoidal stake, it just means snake-like, and we're going to take the widest spot and we're just going to hammer right straight up and down on that point and we're just going to run the metal all the way down end to end and all we want is a slight curve like that uh, so go all the way down do the whole length if the metal starts to curve as you're hammering it more the better because we want this dish to be this way around the finger. So now you'll probably have to anneal this again to finish bending it because it will have work hardened it where we formed it. We're going to form this around our ring mandrel. So what we'll do is we'll take our original size that you wrote down when you found it, go four sizes smaller Hold one end of the ring at that smaller size, form it, and we want to make sure that the two flat sides are next to each other. Yeah. So we can use the same hammer that we used on the sinusoidal stake to form this, and what you want to do is hit right in the middle. Let's see if I can get it so you can see. So you want to hit right in the center of our ring shank because we don't want to flatten these at all. Yeah. So all the way around the shank and ideally when you get it nice and round it'll be at your proper size which mine is. If it isn't, if it's too big, just slide it up or off the mandrel, squeeze it smaller, and go back on. So at this point, it's formed, it's sanded, and we just put this on a wooden ring mandrel, go in the polishing room, and uh, polish it up on Tripoli. You can polish it with a uh, hand piece and a small buff. We just put a uh, small buffing wheel on, charge it with Tripoli, and polish it by hand. So this charging it is just spinning the Tripoli on the wheel. And then safety glasses always when you're using spinning machinery. But you can just polish this up. And you can do it inside and outside by hand. The black that's on it is just wax, so that will just wash off. And you can see that it's actually a fairly nice ring. Nice and simple, no soldering, adjustable, so it makes a nice present because you don't have to be exact. Done.